Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome everyone here at All for Jesus Church. We are now on our Sunday worship service. Praise God. Let's begin worshiping the Lord by singing our opening song in His presence. Praise God. non-denominational church. We believe in Trinity that our Heavenly Father Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit are one God. Amen. Before we 
begin our worship, we would like to share some testimonies from our brothers and sisters around the world. Praise God. Our first testimony is from Sister Vanessa Agassi from the Philippines. Praise God. Uh, we thank the Lord that we prayed for her son. His name is Sander Jem. He's seven years old and he has a delay in his speech but thank god hallelujah the lord moved in his life and now he he can focus and now he can there's an improvement in his speech amen praise amen. god you. our second testimony is from sister lucille solkilo hallelujah we pray that she will overcome and that god will give her strength from the uh, overcome depression and um, physical strength and emotional uh, strength and thank God that the Lord healed her amen and now amen. she is now back uh, to to her at work working praise God and also we we have a, a testimony from brother OG Salcedo from Dubai uh, he has been uh, infected by coronavirus, but thank God now he is healed. And let's pray. Let's continue pray for his fast recovery. Amen. And we pray for. We prayed also for Brother Romulo Gendrala and Leticia Gendrala. Amen. From Paranaque in Manila, they had a coronavirus, uh, but. Thank God. Let's pray for their fast recovery. They are now recovering. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Our uh, next testimony is from Sister Erica Diklich. She's from here in New York. New York. Praise God. We prayed for her. Uh, we prayed for her sister due to surgery. she has a surgery. And thank God she, it, 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 it was a successful surgery. Amen. Praise the Lord. And then we also have a testimony from Sister Maylin Tan in the Philippines. We prayed for her business that they will meet the requirement. Amen. And thank God, hallelujah, they, God really made a way that amen. she, uh, all the quota they already met, amen, all the requirements, amen. And we also prayed uh, for her right breast to ha to stop the pain from her right breast uh, she had a surgery on that uh, on that si on that uh, side but thank god hallelujah the pain is gone amen, amen. praise amen. god truly that god answers our prayers and god hallelujah heal the people who ever call on his name amen, amen. praise amen. the lord hallelujah before we start our praise and our worship may i call my beloved daughter praise god to give us to read us the scripture reading for today. Praise God. Luke 15, verse 7. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99, 99 just persons who need no repentance. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank God for His word truly that anyone who received Jesus Thousands and thousands of angels are rejoicing, even just one. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's sing praises to Him. God is good. Let's give thanks to Him. Praise God.
lead, lead us to our tithes and offering message. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's open our Bible in Malachi 3.10. Bring the full tent into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord of hosts. See if I will not open the bad gates of heaven and pour out blessing for you without measures. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's continue in 11. I will rebuke the devourers for you so that it will not run the produce of your headland. And your vine in your field will not fail to produce fruit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. But our giving our tithes and offering is the way of worshiping the Lord. And we, we thank Him. Everything we have done in our lives, He sees the source of everything. And we always give thanks to the Lord. Bad or good, always give thanks. Because He is the source of everything. And... We need to be faithful to Him. Some big, some Christians, already Christians, they are asking why we are lacking of something else. Because we are not faithful giving Him the tithes and offering. We need to give Him the best because He gave us the best. We, be, we should be faithful to Him. It's not our tithes and offering, also our lives. It's because it's not... It's not enough that we just give the tithes and our lives is that there is no changes. And we're hiding something that's not pleasing to the Lord. We need to be both of them. Giving our tithes and offering and our lives to be uh, pleasing unto the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah for this today, Lord God. Thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you for your mercy and grace upon us, O oh Lord. And Lord, we pray for our tithes and offering, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray that, Lord, hallelujah, that we'll be more be faithful unto you, Lord Jesus. We pray that you're going to bless us abundantly seed in our lives, Lord God. We pray for your Lord Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, with the power of thy Holy Spirit, release your supernatural increase in our lives, Lord God, provision in our lives, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, that we entrust our lives unto you, Lord God. Apart from you, we can do nothing. We entrust our lives to you again next week, in our works, in our in this in our house, in our businesses, we pray in our lives unto you, Lord Jesus, that we'll be more fruitful, Lord God, and more, Lord God, blessing to our eyes, Lord Jesus. And we pray, Lord God, to guide us, protect us, and bless us abundantly, sitting and heal us physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything you've done in our lives, Lord God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God, hallelujah. Here at All for Jesus Church, we believe that your tithes belong to your local church, hallelujah. If you want to give your tithes and offering, praise God, here at All for Jesus Church, and you consider it as your home, praise God, uh, go to www.allforjesuschurch.com for more details. Amen, praise God. Let's prepare our hearts to listen to the word of God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Pastor Isaiah Sungkuan. Junior, praise God. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you all here in All for Jesus Church on our Sunday worship service. And today's topic is found in the book of Matthew 20. Verses 1 to 16. Father, we thank thee for this day, Lord. We thank thee for this day that you have made, Lord. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Father, for this opportunity that you have given unto us. To spread thy words, Lord, to those who listen to your words. We thank you, Father. Be with us today, Lord. And let your name be lifted up in this place. Let your name be glorified in this place. And let your Holy Spirit be upon us, Lord. We thank you, Father, 
for your, for your great mercy, for your faithfulness towards us, Lord, despite the fact that we are sinners, Lord. But you said in your words in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us unto all unrighteousness. We thank you, Father, forgive our sins, Lord, because our sins always separate you from us and you cannot hear our prayers. Wash out, we wash out with our iniquities, Lord, by the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Cleanse us, Lord, with his blood. We thank you, Father, for your divine mercy towards us, for your divine protection for the whole week towards us, Lord, and for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. Hide me behind your back and let your name be lifted up in this place. Cover us with your most precious blood, Lord, and forgive and protect us, Lord, under the shadow of your wings. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's May Saints is found in the, in the book of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 1 to 16, which entitled The Parable of the Workers in the Vineyard. This parable is about the old recruits by vineyard workers and the Johnny come lately or late comers vineyard workers. Jesus tells this parable of the workers in the vineyard to further explain what the kingdom of God is, what the kingdom of God is like before reading any further Take a moment to reread this parable and think about the parable of the laborers in the vineyard. It's about this parable is unique to the Gospel of Matthew. And then along comes Jesus, eager to complicate and confuse even more with our regular attitudes about what's right or fair our idea and understanding of justice usually cannot help but be influenced by our own circumstances and by our opinions about what we and others deserve we insist justice has to do with equality but a lot of time it's a word we throw and fling around to keep people on things we don't like at bay or hold him off. Maybe no other words are credited to Jesus cause as much offense to ethical and upright calculations and his parable of the workers in the vineyard. He compared and equalize the kingdom of heaven or the way things are when God sets the standards to a situation in which hard-working reliable people gets cheated and victimized or do they? Our story goes like this early in the morning a landowner which represent God in this parable, hires people to work in his vineyard at the standard daily wage. He hires additional people at 9 a.m., at noon, at 3 p.m., and again at 5 p.m., telling each this group that he will give them whatever is right. When the hot working ends, the landowner said to his manager to pay the workers the standard daily wage, starting with those who had been hired last. Those who began working at 5 p.m. were giving the daily rate the same amount 
he pledged to those who work from sun up to sundown. Or in other words, those who work the whole day. When the members of that full day crew get to the front to get their wages, they receive the same amount, exactly what they were promised. They thought they were going to receive more when they too were given their standard daily wages. They began to complain and grumble. They were angry because they have done a lot more work than those who had started later in the day. But the owner replied in verse 13. He answered on them, friend, Jesus said, I'm not being unfair to you. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? In verse 14, take your pay and go. I want to give the man who was hard less. The same as you are, the same as I gave you. In verse 15, don't I have the right to do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? In verse 16, so the last will be first and the first will be last. This means that those people who consider themselves the most important in the kingdom of God because their good deeds will be surprised. <coughs> this is how, this is not how God's grace works. People who come to Christianity later in their lives will still be given the same, the same reward the entry of the kingdom of heaven as those who have been faithful all their lives. Amen. Jesus turns such ambition topsy-turvy, amen, topsy-turvy or reverse and inverted. He strips away the visualization and mental picture that our heavenly rewards will be proportionate and consistent to our Christian service. Amen. And he strips away our presumption or he takes away our presumption that we are contesting against one another to gain and win and win heavenly rewards. He leaves us completely and totally dependent on the generosity of a merciful God who is eager to surprise us with blessings and to giving us joy that we would never have conceived. After reading the parable of the workers in the vineyard, we do not dare to look down our noses, amen, at those who have no pastoral and spiritual titles, or those who have more recently come to Christ the jolly come lately, or those whose understanding is less refined, or those whose denomination are less influential, or those whose congregation are smaller, or those whose music is listened by inspired, or those who have less money. We have achieved, have we achieved high possession or accomplished much for Christ? Let me repeat that again. Have we achieved high possession or accomplished much for Christ? Do we have reason for a bit of pride? But then Jesus closes chapter 19 by saying, But many who are first will be last, and many who are last will be first. We can hear that as a wonderful promise. If we think of ourselves, if we think of ourselves as one of the less and poor and powerless, but in Jesus' comment about the person last, there, there, lurks and stay hidden. The warning not to expect God to hand out purple ribbons or 
medal and distinction, amen, to disciples who focus on beating the competition. There are, there's, there's no such things as first placer, second placer, or third placer in the kingdom of God. It really doesn't matter. Maski dumating ka sa finish line na kulay lahat. Ito hindi gaya ng karera, mga kapatid. Amen? Hindi gaya po ng karera ng bisikleta ito. Ako, sumali ako sa karera noon. Third place ang nakuha ko. I landed third place. Magandang pakinggan, third place. Pero, tatatlo lang kaming nag-contestant. Then, the parable of the workers in the vineyard, Jesus, it spells out how the heavenly reward system might look. Keep in mind that Jesus gave this parable in answer to Peter's, to Peter's question. In Matthew 19 verse 27, We have left everything to follow you, Peter said. What then will we have? Peter, who had left everything to follow Jesus, must have heard this parable with some frustration because it applies that the reward that the peep apostle will receive will be the same as the reward that the lesser of disciples will receive. That must have offended Peter's sense of justice. Frankly, it offends our senses of justice too. We are a costume or we are in a habit of functioning in the world where one's rewards are proportionate and consistent to one's service. This parable is similar to the parable of the prodigal son and his elder brother in Luke 15. In both parables, the grace shown to be undeserving person offends those who think of themselves as deserving. However, the prodigal son is so attractive and captivating that he steals our hearts. When we read the parable, we are glad for the mercy shown to the returned prodigal son. We are offended at the elder's brother outrage. Not so with the parable of the workers. They have worked long hard, but master, but the master put them on a par, or he puts them on equality and evenness. With all the rest, in like manner, God has put us on equality and evenness. With the Johnny come lately, or late comers to the faith, and others who have done less or even less. But we don't want to be on levelless. We want to be on top. We would do we don't mercy what God gives freely. But instead, we want justice, what we have earned. If God distributes rewards fairly, we who work all day will get more than those who arrive at late at the last hour. We will receive what we earn, plus a generous bonus. The irony, of course, is that the little bit that we have earned is no consequence when compared to God's grace. This sermon from High Calling discusses how the first goal of our work is to be at work in the Master's vineyard. The worker who realizes that his work or her work is first for the master finds true joy and fulfillment. The present parable is followed immediately by another ending with same words. The first will be last and the last will be first. Matthew 20 verse 16. This suggests that the story of the continuation of the discussion about those whom the God belongs. Entry into God's kingdom is not, is not gained by our works or action, amen, but by the generosity of God. Once we understand 
the parable to be about God's generosity in the kingdom of heaven. We is tell us how it applies to at work. If you are if you are being paid fairly, the advice about being content with your wage may stand. If another worker received an unexpected benefit, would be graceful to rejoice, then complain and criticize. We don't have to read much of the Bible before we notice that it is God's preference to show uncommon compassion to those who don't have it so good, who have been denied a dignified place in the system, amen? The ultimate reward in the, the ultimate reward of faithful discipleship is eternal life. And of that, there is no scarcity or shortage in the kingdom of heaven. Amen. It's not a zero-sum game. A zero-sum game or completely succeed or completely fail. When Jesus offers eternal life to less deserving, He takes nothing from the more deserving. In God's kingdom, we, we can all have a mansion just over the hill. Just over the hilltop. There is no need. There is no need for spiritual competition because our reward will be as good as it could possibly be. This is a hard lesson. This is a hard lesson for competitive people to learn. Why did the first become last? Why? Perhaps because they have become prideful. Amen? Perhaps because they sought to plaster and put a facing on the way to heaven for themselves and their families. With little consideration for others, perhaps because they spend their lives praying, my will be done, instead of thy will be done, or perhaps because their lives have been characterized more getting than giving. The last would include Gentiles. Gentiles, for most of us, among the Gentiles, last, even. And the son who wastes his inheritance and comes home with his tail between her, his legs, amen. See Luke 15. The prostitutes, the drug addicts, the alcoholics, and others, and other people who live a malicious, reckless, and careless lives before turn, turning to Christ and also those who find Christ in their deathbed, or their last and final second of their life, we might shrink back and pull back at the prospect of sharing our heavenly neighborhood with this undeserving last. But let us instead give thanks that God has chosen to include them. Amen? If he has chosen to forgive grievous sins, then we can believe that he will forgive our grievous sins too. Amen. We thank the Lord for great mercy because we need that. We need that. We desire and have our eyes on what God chooses to give to others. We are invited to see ourselves, ourselves in the story. And then apply it to ourselves. The wages at the stake are not actually way daily wages for vineyard work laborers, but forgiveness, life, and salvation for believers. We need not literally be laborers in the vineyard, as we are all of us co-workers in the kingdom and in relationship, one believer to another. Jealousy and discontentment is a problem. Jealousy and discontentment is a problem. The point here is it necessary that other individuals receive blessings from God 
that we don't. That they get more better and lovelier gifts from God. The problem is that they get the same as us. We have a tendency as a parable, as the parable appropriately and correctly illustrate to complain and be resentful of what others receive from God. The parable of the laborers in the vineyard is about discontented and enviousness about our prostration with the grace of God as it applies not to us but to others. Second, the parable of the workers in the vineyard is about the first and the last. The parable itself displays a reversal of expectation. Amen. Displays a reversal of expectations. The last will be first and the first will be last. This is not only the summary of the parable, but a critical aspect in the New Testament theology. The last are literally first, in that we are paid first, and the first who have labored longest must also wait the longest to get theirs. But notice as well that the first who are now last do not receive nothing or less. They receive the same. As the workers themselves say, you have made them equal to us. Amen. Matthew 20 verse 12, letter B. This element of the parable is taking up in the other Gospels. And in Revelation, this shocking and offensive reversal of expectation of our sense of justice and even our hopes is a central piece of the New Testament. Whoever wants to be first must be less and servant of all. Mark 9 verse 35. So much for human ideas of greatness. Some are less. Who will be first? And some are first. Who will be less? Luke 13 verse 30. And it is Jesus who is first and last. Revelation 1 verse 17. Who tells us that we need not fear for in the one who is both first and last. The first and the last are brought together when we are called to lay down the burdens of our days and find our home with God. The embarrassment and offense of this parable is that we are all equal recipients of God's gift. The lapse and error of our faith is that we are usually and habitually jealous when God's gift of forgiveness and life are given to others in equal measure. And the offense of our preaching is based on this parable ought to enclose and inform both to God be the glory. Father in heaven, we thank you, Father, for this day, Lord. We thank you for your message, Lord. We thank you for your great mercy that we, you are distributed, you are distributed to equal, equal amount in us, Lord. We thank you, Father, for, for your great mercy towards us and your loving kindness towards us. Be with us always, Lord, as we go on with our lives. Because apart from you, we can do nothing. We, we praise your name, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you still have no church as for today, you can uh, do it in your home and uh, take a communion with your family and friends. For this is uh, this is the right thing to do to remember our Lord Jesus who was crossed on the on the Calvary for our forgiveness of our sins. Let us pray, Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for, your, for this day, Lord. 
We thank you, Father, for this is the day that you have made, Lord. Forgive our sins, Lord. As you said in your words, that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive our sins and purify us unto unrighteousness. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for we rem remember the, the uh, death of our Jesus Christ, who was crossed on the Calvary, for our forgiveness of our sins. By his wounds, Lord, we are healed. We thank you, Father, for your Son, Jesus Christ. As we partake our communion today, Lord, be with us. Cleanse us with your blood of your, of your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. But before we partake, let's read the uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 24 to 25. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, thus, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. But first, brothers and sisters, I want you to open your Bible in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 28. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord. Eat and drink judgment of himself. Let's partake the bread as the as sim symbolizes the body of Christ. And let's partake, partake the juice symbolizes the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your for your great mercy towards us, Lord. Despite the fact that we are sinners, Lord. But you are the Lord, our God, our mighty God, our Savior. Be with us always, Lord. Because we cannot do anything apart from you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Truly that uh, we need to be vigilant in everything we do as Christians, as a follower of Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. We may call now the praise and worship team to sing our victory song, I Walk by Faith and Not by Sight. Amen. Praise Amen. God.
treasures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourself fully to the word of the Lord. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. To God be the glory. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless.